Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to XPS Tech. I'm Vineet and a new version of Fedora Linux, a popular leading edge Linux distro is out now. Fedora 36 was released on 10th of May. The distro is supported by Red Hat Linux, one of the top Linux based commercial company that provides enterprise level solutions. Fedora is popular among developers and enthusiasts because this is where all latest Linux technologies arrives first. It also serves as a test bed for new technologies that will eventually make its way to Red Hat's commercial Linux distro called Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Therefore, a new release of Fedora is always special and deserves a detailed look. So in this video, let's review Fedora 36. Alright, first is the installation. Fedora is available in three different editions. Fedora Workstation is for regular user for installation on desktop PC. There is also an image for server and one for IoT devices. We are going to look at Fedora Workstation. The installation image size is 1.8 gigs, which is fairly lightweight when compared to recent releases of other popular Linux distros like Ubuntu, Linux Mint or Pop OS. As far as the installation is concerned, there's no change in the installation process. The installation is handled by Anaconda installer and you get all the standard options here. Once the installation is complete and you log in for the first time, Time, you get GNOME Tour app that introduces the new desktop and all its latest features. Alright, moving on to the desktop, this is the GNOME 42 desktop. It's an upgrade from GNOME 41 that was in Fedora 35. Also, this is pure vanilla GNOME desktop without any customization. Fedora gives you stock GNOME experience. All the new features of GNOME 42 are available here. And as far as the look of the desktop is considered, there are no drastic changes here. You have the signature GNOME layout with top bar, activities menu and the dock. There's one subtle change in the design language, uh, which is the rounded corners of desktop elements. So now all menus, windows, highlight tabs, the dock, Everything has rounded corners instead of flat, sharp edges. The other subtle change is the color of folders, which is now blue instead of the default GNOME brown color. Alright, the other big GNOME 42 feature, the system-wide dark mode is also available. I'm a huge fan of the dark mode in general, but Fedora has stepped up a notch. Here you also get matching bright and dark wallpaper pairs to match the respective modes. And it's not just for one odd wallpaper. All new background wallpaper in Fedora 36 has its matching dark wallpaper, which gives a lot of option to the user and they look really nice. Alright, next is the screenshot tool, which which has been completely revamped. Now to take a screenshot, press the print screen key and you get this new screenshot tool. It handles both screenshot and screencast functions. In earlier GNOME version, you only had a screenshot tool. There was no graphical tool to record the screen. You could record the screen by pressing the key combination Control Alt Shift R. This will start the screen recording, but there was no app or user interface. The only indicator that you had was an orange dot at the top right corner. But in this new tool, you get both screenshot and screencast option. I like this clean and simple interface. There is option to select either a specific area of the screen or the entire screen. You can also select a particular app window. There is a switch for each function that is for screenshot and for screen recording. At the center is the record button and on the right side you have the show or hide toggle switch for cursor. So as I said, the tool has a very simple interface and it does its job pretty well. But one downside is that there's no option to change the record setting, which is a real bummer. It's like take it or leave it sort of design. Although the default quality of the screenshot is not bad at all, the resolution of the image depends on the resolution of your display, but the image quality of the screenshot is pretty decent. The codec is PNG and on my 1080p screen, the file size of a screen capture is around 2.4 MB. But the video quality is where I believe it lacks. It records on 1080p resolution when on full screen mode, but the frames varies file to file and it's not consistent. Also the output file format is WebM, which cannot be changed. So it's not perfect, but I hope in future version, we get some option to adjust the record quality. All right, next, the Linux kernel version on Fedora 36 is 5.17 which is the latest stable version available. There is good news for NVIDIA users. Wayland is now the default display server for system with NVIDIA graphic cards. 
It has been the primary display server since the release of Fedora 34 except for NVIDIA user due to driver issues. But with this release, NVIDIA users also get the new display server. And with NVIDIA's recent announcement that they're now releasing open source Linux GPU drivers, things are looking very promising for the compatibility of NVIDIA products with Linux distros. Apart from this, all programming languages and libraries have been updated to their latest versions. Ansible 5 is available now and also Podman 4, the new container system that is set to replace Docker, is available in Fedora for the first time. Fedora is made for developers, so you get access to all major programming languages. The other interesting change is the RPM database directory in Fedora 36. RPM database has been moved from slash var, which is variable directory, to slash USR. The slash USR directory contains executable files and data that can be shared among machines. It is one of the most important directories in a Linux system and holds user programs and data. Moving the RPM database to slash USR will streamline the snapshot and rollback operations. This is something that was introduced in Fedora Silverblue couple of years back. Fedora Silverblue uses RPM OS3, which is a hybrid image package system that provides smooth OS rollback without affecting user data and supports transactional background image based upgrades. If you want to know more about RPM OS3, you can check this website. I'll put the link in the description as well. Alright, so that was all the major changes in Fedora 36. If you are in older version of Fedora, you can upgrade to the new release from the updates tab under GNOME Store app. It's really simple. Alright, so thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, kindly press the like button. If you have any comment, suggestion or feedback, do type that in, in the comment box. A huge shout out to all the subscribers of XPS Tech channel. Thank you for supporting me. Alright, thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.